Oh yeah, we back. Basketball Heads Live, part two, with my guy, Jerry Ice Reynolds. Oh, he giving it up. Definitely. You guys going to check out part two coming up right now. We're about to get into it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Fly Williams, your idol. Right? Yeah. Good yeah. job, Ross, for bringing that up, man. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, definitely uh, War 35 uh, in honor of Fly Williams. Um, so when I moved to Brownsville, um, I think, I, I truly think that uh, God was, was, um, was, had made that move happen. Mm -hmm. and I, because uh, I think he knew how much I loved basketball at that time. At, at the age of 14, I had won a couple of trophies by this time. And I was with Brooklyn USA at, about this time. Uh, had been there a couple of years, actually. I was a, I was a Brooklyn USA veteran by the, by the time I was 14. Uh, right. Uh, so, um, when, so when I moved to Brownsville, uh, uh, the famous hole, the basketball court in Van Dyke Projects is called the hole. And um, my building happened to be right in front of the hole. Like I could see from my bedroom window, I, I could look in the hole. And that's how close I was to the basketball court. Um, so I could come right outside my building or I could look outside my building, outside my window and see who was on the court and know, and know which game I had to bring out there. You know, Right, right. So when I see some serious dudes out there, I'll be like, oh, oh, let me go downstairs and, 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 and get my game on. Or when the big dudes was playing, so Fly and them was considered the big dudes, right? I'm 14. Fly was probably 20, 21, 22 when I first moved out there. Uh, wow. Probably had just finished college, and he was uh, uh, probably – um, early in his ABA ABA career and stuff like that, um, and and like he was he was at the top of this game probably you know what I'm saying like he was 22 23 years old, um, and, and at that point in my life I had never seen anybody play better than him, mm. and that's including, that's including Dr. J, that's including all of the pro dudes I used to watch on TV. That's everybody. World, World, who was from Brownsville too. Uh, he was, and World was in the NBA at the time when I first moved to uh, Brownsville. Um, and 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 he, World used to be out there playing with them too in the hole. And Fly used to kill all of them. Fly used to like, mm. yeah, like and be laughing and joking while he doing it, talking to the people in the crowd, like, yo, these dudes can't guard me. I'm an insect. He used, to, he used to say shit like he bringing the ball up the court like, yo, I'm an insect. Nobody out here can guard no insect. You can't guard an insect and be killing. Why he doing that? Why he saying that? I'm sitting there as a kid going like, damn. Like, how is Excuse my French. How, how is he doing this? You know, and talking at the same time. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fly was um, fly was special, man. And until, until MJ came... I never see anybody play basketball better than Fly. Like, like so, Fly Wings was on Michael was on Michael Jordan level. Yeah, yeah, he was. He had he had better handles than Mike. His jump shot was better than Mike. He could, he could jump like Mike. He wasn't. He didn't have Michael hops like Michael had, but he had crazy hops for a dude that was six five. Um. Um, he could dunk on anybody. Um, so he had he had everything, man. He had he had the whole package, man. He had the whole package. 
And you know, like sticking people to the glass was the thing back when we was coming. Right, through. right, right. Fight to the backboard. Yo, I I seen this dude go snatch dude shot with two hands off the glass. Like, yo. Oh man. I seen wow. uh, I seen fly come down the court, skip and bring the ball up court, and then shoot from 30 feet and call glass. You remember in the park they didn't have yeah, yeah, yeah. no nets on the rim, right? He called glass before he shoot the, 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 the long ball and hit it off the backboard and it hit the backboard and go straight through the rim and it looked like it was a brick, you know what I'm saying? Because it didn't hit nothing. It just hit the backboard and went straight through the rim. So it looked, you know, and it didn't have no nets on the rim. So it just went straight through the rim. You know, it looked like he missed the shot, but the shit went in, right? He, he said, the bank's open. He's called banks open from like 30 feet. And shoot Damn. the trash, right? And be laughing when it going. Like, yeah, y'all can't do nothing with me. I'm an insect. You can't guard no insect. <laughs> he talking to the crowd. Yeah, man, Fly was special, man. Fly was a special. Wow. Player. I used to hear a lot of stories. Uh, again, I, I wasn't <laughs> around to see a lot of you guys play. I was I was playing football early on. So yeah. I'll tell you, 1980 was the time when basketball kind of came into my life. Right. And But to hear these stories, man, and to know that he was on, on a level of Mike. I see why everyone talk about him the way they do when it, when it comes to the, to the game. Yo, he shot the ball better than Mike. He, he, he shot the ball as well as, like, Steph Curry and them, like, like Clay Thompson and them. He had a jumper like that. This shit was wet. Like, from way out. <laughs> way out. Then his handles, he, he could shake you down and then pull up on the dime from 30 feet. Easy. Like I said, be talking to you while he doing it. Did you play up in a rucker? Not a lot. I played in the rucker. I played in the rucker once in a tournament in the rucker. Uh, the rucker, back when I was um, a youth, wasn't the top tournament. Um, you know, citywide was was a, was a tournament. Elm Corps was a, was a was a was a very popular tournament in Queens. Um, 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 I forget the name. Uh, not Lafayette Gardens. Uh, Soul in the Hole. Uh, Soul in the Hole was it was it, was the top tournament. Um, yeah, but at that time, you know, uh, the Rucker the Rucker wasn't the top the top tournament back then. And in Harlem, they had the tournament that was uh on 145th Street. Uh, I forget the name of that uh, tournament, but that tournament was actually bigger. And King Towers. King Towers yeah. was the best tournament yeah. in, in Manhattan. King Towers was the best tournament. It wasn't the Rucker. Uh, that's why yeah. uh, Walter Berry and all of them cats and uh, 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 Richie Adams and, and Eddie Pinckney and all of them, all the Uptown cats used to uh, used to play in King Towers. That was that was the top tournament um, um, up in Manhattan uh, during during my time. <clears throat> Yeah, so. yeah, rep one is, and my man Stay Stem uh, said that as well. King Towers was the joint. Yeah, King Towers. King Towers was a great tournament. Great tournament. You know. All right. So, what did it mean to declare hardship when you was in college? All right. Uh, for me, it was it was uh, it was a crazy decision um, that I made in in, in in my basketball life uh, because of the fact that. <clears throat> Uh, and this all this is gonna be in my book. I got a book coming out. I've been working on my book for shoot, probably four years now. Um, <laughs> right, close, close to it being done. Um, okay, but yeah. So so my decision to go to the NBA after my junior year was not a decision that um, that I was prompted by anyone, any outside source. Nobody told me that this is what you should do. <laughs> You know, because you killing you killing the uh, the SEC and, and you are all American and you you should come out now. Nobody was telling me that kind of stuff. So, so here's the story about how I came to that conclusion. <clears throat> so, my junior year, uh, like I said, my my sophomore year was my best year. <clears throat> I, I I was at fourteen and eight my sophomore year. So, 
uh, after coming off of my sophomore year, I go back to school. I'm ready to go up to 16 to 20 for my for my junior uh, for my senior year. Uh, no, for my for my junior year. <clears throat> so so uh, Dale Brown recruits uh, John Williams out of out of uh, out of L.A. He was the number one player in the in the country uh, at the time. Uh, later on, went to like the next year he left school to go to the NBA hardship after his second year. Uh, so he comes in as a freshman, and I'm I'm a junior at this time. So I'm happy about the situation. I'm I'm you know I'm ecstatic. We got this bad cat. You know we about to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so the year starts and everything going on, and um, so to make a long story short, uh, the coach actually runs the team around John Williams instead mm. of, you know, here I am, I led your team in every category last year. And and then you're going you gonna to cut, my minutes went down, my scoring went down, my rebounding went down, everything went down. All of my statistics went down my junior year. And it wasn't because of John Williams. It was because the coach didn't know how to how to blend our talent. Right. And he figured, I got this kid, let me, let me, let me build everything around him for whatever reason. I to this day I don't know why he did that. But so anyway, so after that season was over, we lose to uh David Robinson and Navy in the uh in the in the NCAA tournament the first round. So after the game, you know, we lose to David Robinson, and they didn't have nobody but him. Mm hmm I remember. No, no reason we should have lost that game. Um, but <clears throat> but we did. So I was kind of salty after the game. And uh, so when I got back to campus, I was like, my, my own cast. So I went from 14 and 8 to my junior year. I was at 11 and 6 after my mm. junior year. Instead of me going up, I went backwards. Right. And I was guilty about that. Uh, so, so I thought about it long and hard. <clears throat> and something, I had took a ride around campus, and I, I was just kind of pondering what I was going to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I was pissed off. I didn't want to, I didn't really want to go back to school for my senior year and have it go down again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, 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 and drop again. So I was like, man, forget that shit. I, I, I got enough skill to play in the NBA. You know, right. I just told myself that. You know, it wasn't like nobody told me that. I, I was just like, I came to the conclusion myself. Um, you know, I was sitting out at one of the lakes that LSU was surrounded by. It's a beautiful campus with these lakes on it. And I went, got out my car and kind of sat out by the lake. And I just thought about it, man. I was like, Man, that's what's up, man. I'ma just go to coach's office and and tell him that I'm leaving. So that's what I did. I went from sitting on the lake. I went. I drove straight to the coach's office, and <clears throat> he was there. I said, "Coach, can I talk to you?" I go in his office and I say, "You know, sit down." I said, "Coach, you know, I want to thank you for for giving me the opportunity to come to LSU and everything, but I think I'm a I, I think I'm gonna put my my name in the hat." in the NBA draft and, um, and and see how I do there. And uh, it's funny because his response was, Terry, you think you think you could go play in the NBA? He said, son, you, you can't shoot. You're too skinny. Those guys will kill you in the NBA. They'll eat you up for lunch in the NBA and spit you out. And I was like, yeah, well, coach, you know, I I respect you. And I respect your opinion. Everybody has one. But I really think my game is more suited for the NBA than it is here with you at LSU. And uh, so he said, you don't believe me? He said, I'm going to call Marty Blake right now. You know, Marty Blake was the head of scouting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he gets on his phone. Doo -doo 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 -doo. He calls Marty Blake up. And he and here's the funny part said, that he didn't know about me being a Brooklyn cat. So he this is what he says to Marty Blake. He said, hey, Marty, how you doing? This is Dale Brown. I got Jerry Reynolds sitting sitting here in my office, and he's thinking about going to the NBA, uh, putting his name in the draft. Would you tell him that if he left right now, he wouldn't make a red nickel uh, going to the NBA? And then he gives me the phone. 
So basically, he just told the dude what to say. Yes. Yep. But yep. he thought he thought I was too too stupid to know that. And so he gives me the phone, and I'm on the phone with Marty Blake, and Marty Blake pretty much says exactly what Dale just said. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, if you come out right now, you know you do this. You you know it's not a good move, and you know you did that. You know whatever. And I was like, I told him the same thing. I said, you know, thanks, Marty. I appreciate your opinion, but uh, you know, my mind is made up, and uh, I'm going in. I'm gonna put my name in. But thank you for your opinion. I appreciate it. And uh, you know, I gave the phone back to Coach. And uh, so that's how that conversation went. You know, I just told him I was leaving. I thanked him, and that was pretty much it, man. And I I had no idea. Uh, what was going to happen after that? All I knew that I was going to put my name in the draft. That's it. Uh, so, so at that point, uh, once I made that decision, now my mindset was I got to get ready for uh, for whatever's next. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really know what was next. I didn't know um, about the pre-draft camp as. The day that I said that to the coach, I didn't know that that's, that was what I was going to have to prepare for in order to uh, 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 build my draft status up. Because that's where you build your draft status up at the pre-draft camp. You know, uh, everybody comes in that's going to uh, be drafted except for the big dogs. The dudes that's going probably top 10, they not coming. But, but, but everybody else was there at the pre-draft camp. And um, like I said, you know, I still had my mentality like, you know, when I go to this pre-draft camp, I'm going to have to bust their ass. I'm going to have to get That's right. Ass. That's right. Um, and let them know that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm here to get a spot. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to deal with me, you know. So, so, like I said, I didn't have a great year my junior year, you know. So, it wasn't uh, like – like most guys that declare hardship, you know what I'm saying? They they have a good year. They're coming off a good, strong year. You know, their numbers are looking good and stuff like that. That wasn't my case. You know what I'm saying? I had to I had to go I had to go to the pre-draft camp uh, in shape and ready to kill, kill, kill. Like Mike said, like Mike Tyson said, you gotta eat, eat, eat. You gotta that's eat right. Everybody. You know what I'm saying? And and that's pretty much what I did at the pre-draft camp. And um and and that's where Don Nelson uh, came up to me, and and uh, and show and told me he was interested in in, in me after I killed him dudes one day, and uh, yeah he came up to me and was like yeah I'm I'm thinking about drafting you um, with my first round pick, um, you know just keep working the way you working and um, you know we'll we'll see what happens, and. Uh, Turned out that's what happened. You know, he drafted me at uh, with his twenty second pick overall, and uh, you know the rest is history. But prior to me going in the draft, when I left LSU, instead of and this was the power move right here. Instead of going to Brooklyn, going home, when I left LSU as a junior, I drove to California, where my agent was located. Uh, my, my agent was located in, in, in L.A., so instead of going to Brooklyn, I made a power move out west, and uh, and that's where I ran into uh, this great runs that Magic that Magic was hosting up at UCLA. Like, all of these pro cats would, would go to UCLA like four days a week, Monday, Monday through Thursday, and Magic – have all of these do it, it'd be it'd be nothing but pros in there, you know, playing ball. So I found out about that run. And um so that's what I used to do every day. I go work out in the morning, I go shoot, run, do all my, you know, what I had to do, work on my game, and then in the evening or in the afternoon, uh they used to play up at UCLA probably like two thirty, three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh you no, know, Reggie Theus, magic. Kiki Vandeway, uh, uh, all of his Lakers guys, Michael Cooper, you know, everybody was up there. Man, the gym was packed. <clears throat> and so here go this kid. I wasn't a pro, but, you know, I was. I just finished my high school, I mean, my college uh, career, and I, mm -hmm. I was trying to 
I'm trying to trying to let these dudes know that I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to get some run. So the only I'm way you right. could run in there was, you know, you had to if they let you play, you had to represent, or else the next time then they ain't letting you play no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't legit. You you know they'll tell you nah, you can't you can't run. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So, still chopping still. So yeah, so so that that really prepared me for the pre-draft camp, uh, being able to run with Magic in them and hold my own, and um, and 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 have Magic like like kind of talk to me and kind of take me under his wing a little bit because he noticed how I was kind of like him. You know what I'm saying? I was tall. I could handle that rock. I could push it. I could drop dimes. You know. I rebounded well. I, I pretty much did the same things he did. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Big guard. So, so he 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 realized that and kind of, uh, you know, we'd be in the locker room after the games and stuff. We getting dressed or showering or whatever, and he just be kicking it to me. You know what I'm saying? And um, and it was very helpful, very helpful. Uh, uh, playing playing with those guys. And I played in a couple of leagues out there. Uh, as well <clears throat> during during that summer before before I went to the pre draft uh pre draft uh camp in Chicago. Well I, I would have thought that Del Brown would have recognized uh during your last game uh in the Maverick Assembly uh hall when you guys play at LSU where you shut down Kenny Walker who wound up going first round, right? And busting his ass. Yeah, well, well, like I said, uh, Dale, me and Dale Brown had a had a. It was cool. He was always a good coach, a, a good guy. Um, he didn't really respect my game because of the fact that, and he told me this one day in practice. He was like, you know, Jerry, you don't you don't work hard enough, you know, and and I took offense to that because I come to work every day. You know what I'm saying? I right. play my game every day. It just I just made it look like I wasn't working that hard. And that's why I got the name Ice, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Because I kind of right, like, right. I ain't doing, you know. Um, but I think the fact that I wasn't the dive in the for the loose ball guy, I wasn't that guy. You know what I'm saying? And that's the kind of kind of guy that he that he tended to appreciate more was that was that uh, that hustle guy that used to dive and, and get and get floor burns and stuff like that. And all of that kind of stuff, and I wasn't really that guy, you know. I was. Right, you wasn't a blue collar guy. You wasn't a blue collar guy. I was smooth. I was a blue collar. That's guy, right. But I just made it look like I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Made it look and, easy. And, and scramble with them big dudes because, and to, uh, truth be told, I was I was playing center, right? I was having the guard, uh, Mel Turpin. And, and and Sam Bowie sometime and, and and these big dudes on these on these SEC teams because our big man was 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 weak you know what I'm saying he right was, right right I'm six eight but I had to guard like the other teams either power forward or center a lot of times uh, so so it it was like you know it was I took it as a slap in the face when he told me I didn't work hard you know what I mean so. But it was all good. It was all good because I, I had I had supreme confidence in my abilities as a basketball player. You know what I'm saying? Even when I left LSU, that's why I told him that, you know, I, I think I can play with the big boys. And, and, you know, whether you think so or not, that's that's your problem. I, you know, I just say I respect the opinion, but, you know, I'm, I'm over here. I'm going this way. Um, you know, I'm going to holler at y'all. So, so yeah, man. When I when I went out west, got with got with uh, Magic and them guys, man. And and that was like, that was like, uh, that was like my my grand opening to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? It was like a sneak preview. And uh, and that 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 worked. That that winded up helping me uh, when I when I did go to the to the pre-draft camp. I was I was ready. I was in tip top shape. And um, and I knew what I had to do. I knew exactly what I had to do to um, to get my draft status up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think if you came back to New York, things were to work out in your favor because of the amount of pros that was playing at the time in California. And it's still like that to this day. You know, the Drew League 
compared to like our pro leagues out here um, is very different. Um, whereas it's not a lot of oohs and ahs as far as like tricks going in the Drew League compared with as in New York, right? Right. right. Well, well, the dynamics ha has shifted um, for whatever reason. You know, New York used to used to be the hotbed. Um, yes. But you know, LA seemed to you know um, um, you know with with with, with Magic and, and how much he loved the game. So much, though, you know, that he just used to just love to play. You know what I'm saying? And I and I that's how I, I was. You know, I just love to play. So, and I love to play against top competition. You know, so so yeah, that that really that. Uh, and plus, if I would have went home, um, there was a lot of uh, distractions. Distractions, yes, you know yes. You being ice and all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know anybody out west really. You know, and, and my my focus was was I had the blinders on. You know what I'm saying? That's all I was doing was thinking about my game, and and now this was my job. You see what I'm saying? It went from from college to where it was all fun. Now, um, I'm I'm getting ready to to do this for a living. So I had to turn it up as a man, and and take it more seriously. You know, because I knew that you know I had I had my family to take care of. You know what I'm saying? So. So, uh, so yeah, I, I grew up. I grew up real quick when I got out to LA. You know what I mean? Grew up real and who quick. you got drafted by? I got drafted by Milwaukee Bucks. Don Nelson. Don Nelson uh, was a man of his word, and uh, he took me. He took me. Um, How long did you stay there? At the twenty-second pick, um, I, I played in Milwaukee for three years. So you know, I signed a, a, a three-year guarantee uh, with the fourth-year option. Uh, so, but the funny thing was that after he drafts me, he, uh, he, he, he invites me to come take a trip with him up in, uh, up in Maine. I guess he has some friends of his up in Maine. So he asked me to come take a trip with him to go visit some of his friends. And I guess he was going to use this trip to, uh, to bond with me, to connect with me. You know what I'm saying? So we, I go with him. And we in the car, we ride. I think he picked me up from the airport, and uh, we ride. And he's telling me, he said, "Yeah, Jerry, I love your game. You know, you remind me a lot of Paul Pressy, and um, you know, I, I think you're gonna have a have a have a good career in the NBA. But I just gotta let you know that I don't like rookies. And rookies don't play for me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say this again, cause hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. <laughs> what what you say? He said. He said, and this is verbatim, verbatim. He said, I don't like rookies. And rookies don't play for me. Wow. And he, was, he wasn't joking. He wasn't laughing. He wasn't in a, in a, in a playful mood or nothing. He was dead serious. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm in the car with him, and I'm like, I'm looking at him like, you know, I'm looking at him side eye. You know, I don't want to, like, give him the Brooklyn gas face and stuff like that, but... You know what I'm saying? I was kind of, I was kind of tight about that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, so I'm thinking about how I'm gonna come back at him. What I'm gonna respond to what he just told me? I'm thinking, you know, right. thinking about what I'm gonna say back to him. And I was like, you know, I understand that, coach. And um, you know, I respect that. You know, I don't know why you don't like rookies, but I'm gonna be the first rookie to play for you. And. Um, you know, and I said, reason being, I'm gonna work my ass off every day in practice, and I'm gonna make you give me some run. I'm gonna make you give me some playing time. Mm. Um, and you know, he 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 just said, okay, well, you know, we'll see about that. And uh, he said, and then he starts talking to me about conditioning in the NBA. You know, you how 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 important it is to come to to camp in in tip top shape. He said the worst thing you could do is to go into an NBA camp out of shape. Mm. That's the worst thing you could do. And, um, and what he didn't know was that being in shape was how I live. You know, I'm a skinny dude. I never, I never gained no weight. You know what I'm saying? All, all I, all I need to do was dust off my lungs a little bit and, uh, and, and just play. Because really, that's all. Right, I did. right. I never worked with a trainer in my life. All I did was 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 work out, shoot, 
dribble, do do my drills, you know, my transition drills, my, my conditioning drills, and work on my handles and, and shoot the ball because I always wanted to be a better shooter. Uh, but it did. But then in the evenings, I always found the, the best run in town. You know what I'm saying? Wherever I was, I went to play. And, and that was my thing. I just played. I just played. And I really, I, you know, I didn't waste time when I played. And I tell kids that all the time. It's like, whenever you step on this court, you yep. got to kill. You got to kill. <laughs> if you're trying to make some money at this, you got to, I don't care who you're playing against, you got to kill people. You know what I'm saying? To mm. where every time you leave the court, they should be coming to you and say, yo, man, you got a nice game, man. I, you know, I like playing with you, man. You all right, but you know what I'm saying? And um, and and so that's how that was that was my, my mentality, man. It was just it was just eat, eat, eat at all costs. You know, play your game, you know, and not try to do what you what you what, what's not your what's not your uh, skill set. You know what I'm saying? Like I was not right. trying to shoot jumpers. I knew I wasn't a jump shooter. I'm a slasher. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what I do. You know, and I'm gonna run that court. And I'm a finish, and, and 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 you know, so that's 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 what I did, man. That's how I got there. And you stayed there for three years, and then you became one of the first players uh, selected in the expansion draft with uh, the Orlando Magic. Well, I got traded. Uh, what happened was um, Milwaukee picked up my option, my fourth year. They picked up the fourth year option, even though I didn't oh, play. Okay. Three years, you know, I didn't get much run uh, in those three years. I think I might have averaged like seven, eight minutes a game over three mm. years uh, for Milwaukee. <clears throat> and um, eight point, like six points. I averaged eight minutes, but I averaged like six points. So when I did the game, I used to get my shit off. <laughs> you know right, 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 right. Because the vets, the vets would be laughing at me uh, because my goal was to try to get 10 points in my garbage time. You give me garbage time, you give me six minutes to play, I'm coming out of there with 10 points. You know what I'm saying? And, and so the vets used to be laughing at me because I'd be working so hard to get my shit off. You know what I'm saying? In, in a short amount of time. Uh, so, so they, like I said, they picked up my option and then I went to, they traded this, they traded me to the Sonics with, uh, so, so those three years, we make the playoffs every year. So I was a playoff. Uh, I got that playoff money all three years I was in Milwaukee because we had a great team uh, over there. We just couldn't beat Boston. That's when Larry Bird was running the NBA, you know. Yes, it was, yes. It, it was either Magic winning in the West or, or Bird winning it in the East, and they was running shit. So, so we couldn't get over them. And Dr. J, Doc, we lost to the Doc one year, too, um, out there in the East in the playoffs. So they traded me to Seattle um, in uh, 88. And uh, so I'm out there with Dale Ellis was the man, Xavier McDonald. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Derek McKee, uh, uh, Michael Cage, uh, Dale Three, uh, Nate McMillan. We had a nice squad. We was a, a playoff squad out there. But when I went out there, now you got to deal with magic in them. Um, yes. So that was tough, you know what I'm saying? But but I liked it, though. That's that one year in Seattle. Uh, here's a funny story about the Seattle experience. So I get traded to Seattle, right? Now, Bernie Bickerstaff was the head coach. So I, yes. like it. I got a brother. I like playing for brothers. So I go out there. And uh, so Bernie, Bernie was cool and everything. And, um, you know, so I figured... I get a chance to not start. I wasn't going out there to break in the starting lineup, but I was going out there to to be in the rotation. You know, right. I'm a I'm a four year veteran, and uh, you know I work my ass off in practice every every day. So I'm I'm going at whoever whoever played my position, which was Derek McKee and uh, Xavier McDaniel, you know, who were two. two very good players. Uh, Beast. So, you know, I was just trying to trying to get some run, you know, uh, more run than I got in Milwaukee. So, right, right. So what happens is, um, you know, preseason kicks around and I 
I lead the team in scoring in the preseason off the bench. Wow. We play eight we play eight preseason preseason games. I average twenty points a game and I average twenty minutes a game. And I lead the team in scoring over the whole preseason. Mm -hmm. so, so my confidence is is really is really good at this point in my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm feeling good about myself. Uh, I had a great preseason. So the regular season kicks off, first game. And I kid you not, I didn't play one minute in the first game. Wow. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to eat that one. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to eat that. Right? So the second game comes. I don't get no run again. Second game. So I'm practicing. You know, I'm going doing what I normally do. I'm working hard, busting my ass and shit. And uh, so five games go by. I don't get no run. Not one tick, bro. Not one tick. So I'll never forget this day. We in Denver. We playing against Alex English and uh and Fat Beats, Beats. Beats. And right. Denver, right? So after the game, um I I I, I corner Birdie. You know, everybody left the locker room and I made sure it was just me and him. I was like, mm -hmm. hey, can I talk to you? Can I talk to you for a second, coach? He said, Yeah, what's up? <laughs> I was like, man, you know, I just really, really want to know why I'm not getting no playing time. And this man actually looked at my face, you know, you know working hard in practice. Jimmy. I was like, I wanted to, I, I wanted to put hands on the dude in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I cooled out. I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't get Brooklyn on him. I, I, I was thinking Brooklyn, but I didn't get Brooklyn on him. Right. But, you know. All right, man. Well, I, I I work hard today. You know what I mean. So, so anyway, uh, season goes on. Uh, I get a little bit of run. I probably average in Seattle about ten, twelve minutes a game over there. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really get much run. Uh, I played, but you know, it was just sparingly. Um, so basically, the first four years of my career, I didn't really get no run. You know, I just wow. had to go to practice and kill every day and just get overlooked, you know, because I always got my shit off. I don't care. Who, Sidney Moncrief, Dale Ellis, Xavier McDaniel, they'll all tell you I got my shit off every day in practice. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the fact that I didn't get any run, you know, it just kind of made me uh, go to the summer leagues because that's really what happened. When I went to the L.A. Summer League every summer, all three, all three of those summers, four of those summers in a row, I would go out there and kill everybody in the summer league. Like, mm. I had 25 in the summer league and make all tournament every year in the summer league, and everybody be like, yo, man, why they don't give you no run, kid? You nice. You got a nice game. Be like, man, it's just it's just the way it is, man. And, you know, politics, so, politics of the game. You know, so... You know, I, I, I'm glad that, <clears throat> looking back, I never let that break my spirit, though, you know, and, and, and let me have a, 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 a bad attitude. It, it never got to that, you know what I mean? I always kept working right. on positive attitude and uh, and learned while I wasn't getting no run. I, those practices against the guys of Sidney Moncrief, Ricky Pierce in Milwaukee, you know, playing against those guys taught me a lot, you know what I'm saying? So when I got my opportunity in Orlando, <clears throat> Now I get to the to the expansion team and there's no all stars. There's no everybody's on a clean slate. You know what I'm saying? There's right. no uh, right. there's uh, uh preseason starters that you know nobody's etched in already. Everybody gotta work for this. So now, you know, like I said, man, God be looking out for a brother, man, and um put me in that situation and I was like, Okay, open at night. I'm going to be in that starting lineup. That was yeah. my, my attitude. You know what I'm saying? So whoever whoever at the small forward, they're going to have a problem over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just I just made sure I, I killed whoever that was. I think it was uh, Jeff Turner. Uh, who else what did we have at my position um, in Orlando? Uh, um, uh, Otis Smith, uh, Jeff Turner, 
And those were pretty much the guys I had to, you know, beat out for, for the starting spot. And uh, I was able to do that. So opening night for the Magic, first season, first game, you know, hearing my name called in that starting lineup meant a lot to me. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Who was in that starting lineup with you? Uh, uh, Sam Vincent played the point. Reggie Theus was at the two. I was at the three. Uh, Terry Catledge was at the four. And yes, and Big T. Corzine was at the center spot. Old Dave Corzine mm. at the end of That's the That's right. Game. And uh, I wow. think he got hurt the first game. He got hurt the okay. first game. And then uh, Sid, Sidney Green stepped in uh, as as the center when, they, when Corzine went down. So yeah, that was definitely Yeah, you you was definitely uh in you're definitely in the record book for that for being uh in that starting five for all the years that you worked and all the hard work that paid off, you was in the starting five for a brand new franchise, uh yeah. getting a start and it yeah, turned out to be very, very good for you. Off that game. <laughs> huh? I said I got my shit off that game. You know what I mean? I had a good game. Right. Right like 17, 18 points. And um, I think we got the win. I think we won our first game, if I'm not mistaken. And I uh, had a good game. And, um, you know, it was a great experience, man, and, and having that opportunity to uh, to uh, to compete for a starting spot and, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and experience that, you know, because I, had, I hadn't experienced that up until, up until my, my, uh, my fifth year in the league, you know. Yeah, and I actually was watching that game uh, when Scott Scouts, I think, had 30 points. No, 30 uh, assists. They yeah, how many? 30 assists. 30 assists, excuse me. That's right, 30 assists. And you hit the shot to give him that 30th assist. Right, right. So we broke the record. We broke the record on, 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 my, on, my, uh, on my jumper. My 20-foot jumper broke the, broke the assist record uh, in uh, 1990. That that record that record still stands today. And wow! I don't think it's going to be broken. Wow! And they said you couldn't shoot. Right, I couldn't shoot, but I had worked on my shot uh, over over the years. You know what I'm saying? I had become a better shooter over the years because uh, I got tired of coaches uh, in the NBA saying, "Back off of him! Back off of him! He can't shoot. He don't want to shoot." Wow. Back up. They used to always say that. Back off of him. He don't he wanna drive. He wanna drive. Back off of him. He can't shoot. So, you know, I, I got to the point where they wasn't saying that no more. And when I got to Milwaukee, I mean to Orlando, uh they they wasn't saying that anymore. You know, and how man? long did you stay in Orlando? Uh three years before my injury. I had uh I had played three years with the Magic. I started the first year. And then the second year, they draft uh, Dennis Scott. Yes. Who also played my position. Uh, and the funny story goes that uh, uh, so 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 I knew Dennis was coming in, and um, I knew he played my position. So I wasn't about no, to let no rookie come in there and do nothing any motherfucking way. So he, you know, right. so going to have a problem uh, getting that starting spot. You know what I'm saying? Because I had started the first year. Then when he came in, I think he was the third pick overall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great college career, great shooter, uh, great player. Uh, but he was he was thick though. He was big. You know, he was slow. And, right. Uh, so so in order in order for him to beat me out for that spot, he had to he had to keep up with me, and and he couldn't do that. So basically, they gave him the spot because he was the third player pick. But. Uh, I used to bust his ass every day in practice. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee that. <laughs> All right, so we want to ask uh, this last question. Um, best player in high school you played against? One, just one. Chris Mullen. Chris Mullen, got you. Best college player? Mike. And best pro? Mike. <laughs> got you, got, but Kareem, got you. But Kareem, but Kareem, you know, it, it's a co-player. It's a co-player. It's uh it's actually it's actually 
because people ask me who who was the toughest guy that I played against in the NBA, and I I I normally don't say Mike, but I'm kind of leaning a little more towards Mike after I saw the last dance. <laughs> right, 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 right. But let me tell you something, bro. Larry Bird was that dude, bro. Larry Legend. When them three years when I played in Milwaukee, and I sat there and watched, you know, because I had the best seat in the house. That's right, that's so, right. Bro, let me tell you something, bro. Larry Bird was the baddest month I ever seen do it, bro. Like, for wow. real. <laughs> for real, wow. for real, bro. Yeah, like, I had never seen a white dude destroy brothers like that before. I've never mm. seen that before. You know, now I saw Chris Mullen play, but he wasn't on Larry's level. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. Another, a whole nother level. And uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, Larry. Uh, when I caught the NBA, um, I played against my idol was 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 Kareem and Dr. J. Those were my two idols growing up before I got into the NBA. And um, you know, so so playing against all of those guys, man, you know, was was a great experience for me, man. To be on the court with Kareem, let me know. The first time I was on the court with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, let me know that I had arrived as a basketball player, that I had reached the pinnacle of basketball when I was on the same court with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It's crazy. I got wow. <laughs> I got chill bumps the first time I played against Kareem. Man, that's crazy. You know, I had posters of me, I had pictures of this dude on my wall, him and Dr. J. You know right, I mean? right. It wasn't about Mike. Okay, okay. It was about Kareem, you know? So, top five ball players from New York City. Oh man, top five out of New York. I would have to go Kareem, Dr. J, Bernard King, Tiny, and Chris Monk. Gotcha. That's solid. Any last words you want to give to our audience before we get out of the eyes? Oh man, it was uh it was a pleasure, man, uh sharing my story with you guys, man. And um like I said, I have been writing a book for the last four years. Uh it'll be coming out uh within the next year or so. Uh the unorthodox rise to the top of the NBA, uh by by Jerry Ice Reynolds. Uh because <clears throat> as you heard, my story is, is totally unorthodox of, of Definitely. Yeah. And um, the things I, I went through uh, once I got there, um, and, and 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 still was able to uh, to have a solid career, you know, uh, with all of the obstacles that I that I had to uh, uh, experience. But yeah, it was a, it was a pleasure, man, and uh, look forward to seeing you in person uh, when I get up top. And um, you know, everybody stay safe, man, and. Uh, 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 keep your, your, your family safe and uh, a lot of love to everybody man one love y'all appreciate you Ice thank you thank you thank you this means a lot to myself and my partner here at Basketball Heads man um, we want to definitely give you your flowers man and let you know we appreciate you um, and, and all the memories you gave us and, and the, the barbershop talk we can still talk about you and some of the things that you did in the past, man. So I, I appreciate you, my brother. Hey, much respect, man. Much respect. And uh, anytime I can help out, man, holla at your boy. Definitely. When you come up top, give me a call. You know what I'm saying? And we'll do part two in the studio when you got your book. All right. Bet that. I look forward to it. All right. All right, man. Stay up, bro. Thank you a lot, man. Take care. All right, man. Stay up. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah.